Welcome back friends, as we have already finished the, the anatomy of the upper limb so today we are going to start the anatomy of the thorax and uh, in the anatomy of the thorax we are starting by discussing the thoracic wall so today I uh, will have a discussion on the thoracic wall and uh, all the aspects regarding the thoracic wall so in overview Thorax is a region of the body between the neck and the abdomen. So when we are moving from the head then to the neck, going to the abdomen, we are passing through the region of the body which is a thorax. So between neck and abdomen, we have thorax. It is an irregular shaped cylindrical with the two openings. It has superior thoracic aperture, or we call it thoracic inlet, which is narrow opening superiorly and then it has inferior thoracic aperture which is thoracic outlet so we have thoracic inlet and thoracic outlet we shall study later some of the structures they are passing through the thoracic inlet and they are going down to the thoracic outlet some of the structures they are starting in the thorax and they are passing through the thoracic inlet or the superior thoracic aperture is how we shall study later. Now the inferior thoracic aperture is a relatively large opening in the filial as compared with the superior one. The superior thoracic aperture is open allowing continuity with the neck but the inferior thoracic aperture is closed by the diaphragm. So presence of diaphragm separates the thorax with the abdomen and it is a very important structure in the inspiration and expiration that is pumping uh, getting in air and removing out air as I will study later now this is how uh, we can see the surface anatomy of the thorax now this is the abdomen this line separates between the thorax and the abdomen and this line we can say that uh, Diaphragm is about here where the ribs the ending is where the diaphragm is also present So thorax in this region from here to here to the top and here we'll have uh, the superior Thoracic aperture and here the inferior thoracic aperture. So if you compare the superior and the inferior one The inferior thoracic aperture is large as compared with the superior one All of the ribs they are present in the thoracic region and other things which we shall study later so the superior thoracic aperture is open allowing some structure to pass through while the inferior thoracic aperture is closed by the diaphragm however this closing of the inferior thoracic aperture does not prevent passage of some structures such as esophagus and vagus nerve from the thorax passing down to the abdomen so it is closed, but the esophagus and the vagus nerve they are passing through the diaphragm. So superior thoracic aperture is open and allow the passage of some of the structures, such as the blood vessels coming from the heart, which is present in the thoracic region, going out to other parts like uh, upper limb or to the head and neck. So in the major compartments of the thoracic region, we have the thoracic wall and then we have the thoracic cavity and its content so thoracic wall is what we will discuss in this session but thoracic cavity and its content it is a very long topic so we will study it later in other sessions about the contents of the thorax so thoracic wall is made up of both hard tissue and soft tissue the hard tissues they are bones and the cartilage while the soft tissues they are muscles and the nervous together with vascular structures we call them together as nervovascular structures now the bones and the cartilages all of them we shall discuss them in this session also the muscles and the nervous and the vascular structures in the thoracic wall so the thoracic wall tend to include the thoracic cavity enclosed thoracic cavity so on the outside the wall is covered by the skin and inside it is lined by the parieto priula parieto priura as I will study later 
we have parieto priula and the abysala priula covering the lungs. The framework of the wall of the thorax is formed by the bones and cartilages and is referred to a thoracic cage. Thoracic cage. So now we have a framework to now we have a man. Kitu kinacho jenga kinacho fanya thorax yone kane kwenye shape yake. It is what we call the uh, framework. For example, in this diagram, this is what we can call it the framework. The shape, this shape of thorax is formed by bones and the cartilage and that's why we call it the uh, framework and by single name it's called uh, the thoracic cage so uh, thoracic cage this is how it appears as you can see the ribs and uh, sternum manubrium and cephoid so yeah all of this it is a uh, sternum but uh, it is just uh, has some parts ribs and uh, coastal cartilages all of these they are making the thoracic cage so this is the uh, anterior view of the thoracic cage how it can be seen anteriorly the ribs from rib number one to rib number number 10 and other two floating ribs all of them they are they are making the thoracic cage the clavicle is present for attaching the thorax to the upper rib so clavicle tend to attach the thorax to the upper rib or in other ways you can say it attaches the upper limb to the thorax because uh, thorax is there but the upper limb is just like a attachment the limbs they are attaching to to the thorax so this is the posterior view of the thoracic cage as you can see we have a scapula for stabilizing the positions of the upper limb uh, when it attaches the uh, skeleton of the body and then you have uh, a common process and things like that so thoracic cage how it appears as you can see these in yellow color they are costal cartridges you have the sternum in green color we have the ribs in blue color then the thoracic vertebra in this uh, in this gray color so as you can see we have thoracic vertebra which are 12 in number and the ribs they are coming from um, from thoracic vertebra number one they are like moving down as i will see later that the position of the position of the sternum or position of the manubrium is not the same uh, is not at the t1 but it is uh, at about t t t something not t1 so in terms of boundary the thoracic cage posteriorly is bounded by the 12 thoracic vertebra anteriorly is bounded by the sternum and the costal cartilage anteriorly and laterally it is by 12 ribs and intercostal spaces on each side where superiorly is by suprapiolo membrane suprapiolo membrane and inferior by the diaphragm this is the how the thoracic cage is so this is the diagram of the thoracic cage we have um, seen it several times in the previous slides and we have uh, already said that we have the costal cartilages when we are saying the superior boundary is here Posterior boundary means is a, a posterior boundary in the uh, in the spinal vertebra. I mean thoracic vertebra, and then we have the costal cartilages, which are in in a gray like color. We have the sternum, which is divided into uh, manubrium, bone, and a cephoid process. All of these will be discussed later. We have the angle of Lewis, a structure which is present here, are the at the point between the manubrium and the body of sternum we have the angle of ruiz is how we shall discuss later so let's start by discussing the osteology osteology and we are starting with the sternum the sternum is the bone which is present at the implant of the thorax so sternum is the flat bone consisting of three main parts the manubrium the body and the symphony the process so the manubrium the manubrium uh, is this one as you can see here uh, this one is what we can call it the manubrium this is the body and below here we have the cephoid process we have the cephoid process so all of these all of these they are making up what we call uh, the sternum they are making up the sternum all of these they are making up they are making up the sternum so, 
kama unaweza kuona hapo kwenye green ni manubrium body sifo di process uh, pia hapo unaona ni laboring ya kile kitu kile kile kinaendelea here we have the jugular notch articular site for clavicle articular site for first rib then second rib anakuja pale second rib anaattach wapi kwenye sternal angle au wengine wanaita angle of lewis au manubrio sternal junction joint hiyo hapo sternal angle angle of lewis kama the, the best name is the sternal angle but the angle of lewis and other some other names they are not common but you can be asked in your in your, in your exam so you need to, to know them so unaweza kuona kwamba hapa tunakuwa tuna articular facet for second rib then huko zinaendelea from third then fourth sixth na kuendelea huko kwa hiyo unaweza kuona hii itakuwa ni ya tatu ya nne ya tano ya sita hapa ya saba so ukitoka ya saba ya saba ndio rib ya mwisho inayotouch kwenye stena moja kwa moja ya nane ya tisa ya kumi zina touch kwenye ya saba tutaenda kuona kwenye classification of ribs so unaweza kuona pia diagram hii hapa inaonyesha the same thing about the structure of the sternum division into manubrium body and sifo di process so manubrium inakuwa ile pale mpaka pale kwenye sternum angle body then sifo di process so let's start by discussing the manubrium of the sternum this is the widest and the thickest part of the sternum angled posteriorly on the body of sternum at the manubrio sternum joint so at the manubrio sternum joint it is angled posteriorly kama imerala kwa nyuma and it forms the sternal angle or the angle of lewis angle of lewis the sternal angle is the major surface landmark used by clinicians in performing a physical examination of the thorax it is the point at which all ribs and hence intercostal spaces are counted kwa hiyo mtu anapotaka ku count ribs kwa kupalpate kwa kupapasa lazima angalie kwanza sternal angle iko wapi angalie sternal angle iko wapi so sternal angle is very important surface markings kwa clinicians ambao wanataka ku count ribs kwa sababu gani tena kuna huko mbele kuna vitu kama kuchukua pazlet unta kuchukua pressure blood lazima ujue ribs ya ngapi unaweka unaweka kipimo chako sasa unapotaka kujua ni ribs ya ngapi unaweka maana lazima u count how do you count the reference point in the sternal angle or in the angle of lewis so it is very important and it normally appears in mcq in the upper border of the manubrium is a jugular notch it is generally in line with the disc between t2 and t3 jugular notch line in line with the disc t2 and t3 and is also in line with the point where left common carotid artery issues from the outer left common carotid artery in a, in a, yani left common carotid artery inakuwa inatoka kwenye aorta inajitenga so tunachokisema ni kwamba tunachokisema ni kwamba um, about the the, the jugular notch unaona jugular notch imeanzia wapi imeanzia t3 and t4 uh, t2 and t3 at the boundary of t2 and t3 that means ribs zinakuwa zinashuka kule zimeanzia t1 huko zinakuja ku join somewhere at a point ambayo iko chini yake tena kuona eh, the body of sternum forms the back of the sternum articulates above with the manubrium at the manubrio sternal joint or angle of lewis or sternal angle and below with the sifo di process at the sifo sternal joint um sides are notched where it is articulated with the cartilages of the second to seventh rib second to seventh rib from there we have the sifo di process a thin plate of hyaline cartilage that becomes ossified during adult life so sifo di process in chari na kwani cartilage then it it become ossified into bone in adult life forms in inferior end of sternum inferior end of sternum inatengeneza inferior end of sternum articulates only with the sternal body articulates only with the sternal body and serves as the attachment point for diaphragm and some abdominal muscles diaphragm and some abdominal muscles 
no ribs or coastal cartilage are attached to it no ribs or coastal cartilage are attached to seafood process now let's move to the ribs um, ribs they are arranged in 12 pairs so 12 ribs they are present at the, at the left and 12 on the right all ribs they are created with the thoracic vertebra thoracic vertebra posteriorly but anteriorly they join with the sternum through the respective coastal cartilage directly or indirectly now remember for this point we have two floating ribs which do not join anteriorly floating ribs as i will discuss later rib number 11 and 12 they are floating they do not attach anteriorly to any of the structure either directly or indirectly now uh, they are divided into three categories we have two ribs from number one to number seven which are attached directly to the sternum by their coastal cartilage from number one rib number one number two number three number four number five number seven they are attached directly to the sternum because they are called the true ribs then we have four ribs from number eight to the number ten so number eight number nine number ten number number eight number nine number ten they are floating ribs these three they are floating ribs and then um attach the anterior to each other and to the seventh rib by means of their coastal cartridge so na kuja kuona uh, the number number 10 number 9 and number 8 they may attach themselves to anterior and then they may to attach to the seventh rib ambayo may attach kwenye kwenye sternum from there kuna floating ribs number 11 and number 12 so number 11 and number 12 there is no anterior attachment that's why they are called the floating ribs and this is the diagram which show the how the ribs they are arranged so uh, other classification of ribs we can classify them into typical and atypical ribs typical and atypical ribs so what do we mean when we are saying about typical ribs and typical ribs they are ribs number three to number nine number three to number nine what are the features of the typical ribs typical ribs uh, in head they have two articular facets head have two articular facets superior and inferior while in the neck of the typical rib neck tend to separate the head from tubercle head from tubercle but tubercle has articular medial and non-articular lateral part tubercle has articular medial and non-articular lateral part so the tubercle has two parts, the medial and the lateral one. The medial is the articular one and the non-articular one is the lateral part. Then from there we have the shaft of the rib. In the shaft of the rib it is thin and flatty. The shaft is thin and flatty with the internal and external surfaces. With the internal and external surfaces. Superior margin is smooth and rounded. Superior margin of the shaft is smooth and rounded. The inferior margin is sharp and immediately above it is marked by coastal groove on its internal surface. The coastal groove are, allow the passage of um, structures such as the, the veins and the arteries, also the nerves which are supplying the uh, intercostal muscles. So it has the angle lateral to the tubercle. It has angle lateral to the tubercle. So we shall see later the difference between typical and atypical ribs. The two are two head has two articular facets. So in the typical ribs, as you can see, the head has two articular surfaces, the superior and the inferior one, as you can see here. The superior and the, the inferior articular facets. Then you have articular facets at the at the tubercle. Tubercle it has articular surface and non-articular articular surface at the tubercle here is the neck then mm, this is uh, how the body of our of our typical rib tend to to be seen so as you can see uh, we have the smooth superior margin and the sharp inferior margin here is the coastal cartilage so you can see the how the internal and then you have the coastal groove which allow the passage of the structures like blood vessels and nerves. So we have the sternal end, the vertebral end, and the shaft, which are very important for, 
for us to know. Then we have the two surfaces which are external and internal surfaces of the rib, two margins or borders, superior and inferior, and the coastal groove which is present there. So again, this is how the typical rib can be seen, and this is taken from the book of our Snell Clinical Anatomy. This is how the book, uh, the, the, the typical rib can be seen. From there, uh, you can see this is how the the vertebra, thoracic vertebra appears at the point of our uh, attachment of ribs. So, as you can see, how the thoracic vertebra they are, they have a, a, a facet here and they have the facet there. So, all of these provide the point of attachment of the rib. So, how the ribs attaches on the thoracic vertebra is that one rib attaches to two thoracic vertebra. So, the rib they attach in between the two thoracic vertebra. And this is how the typical ribs they are attaching. Unazo kana kwamba typical rib inavu attach ni kwamba hapa tunakoto na thoracic vertebra mbili. Typical rib yenye na kuji kuji attach katikati ya zile thoracic vertebra mbili. Wakati unaona kuna superior coastal transverse ligament. Yani ligament yanato kwenye yo transverse process of the transverse process of the uh, of the vertebra then to the rib. Also tunakoto na a uh, coastal transverse joint and things like that many cartilages they tend to stabilize to stabilize the ribs by attaching it to the uh, process on, on the vertebra also we have the atypical ribs atypical ribs is rib number one number two number ten number eleven and, and number twelve the easiest way to remember atypical ribs that their number contain one or two ribs with the number one or two number one number two number ten contain one number eleven contain two one and number twelve contain one so a typical ribs all of their typical ribs they contain one now the first rib uh, it is a typical because all of the typical ribs they have similar features typical ribs they have similar features but a typical ribs they have uh, different features which are unique from other ribs, that's why they are called easy, atypical. So in the first rib, the unique feature, it has flat in horizontal plane. It is flat in horizontal plane. Single facet, T1 only. So it has a single facet, and if you put it in horizontal plane, maybe a table, it is flat. It is flat, as different from other ribs. The second rib is like rib, rib one. It is flat, but twice as long. So second rib is flat but twice as long. So again, at, it, it has a, the single facet. Then from there, the third rib, that means it has two facets. Uh, third vertebra and the fourth one. From there, the tenth rib, tenth rib, it has single facet, T10 only. That's why it is a typical. Then uh, 11th and 12th ribs, single facet, no tubercle or neck. Single facet, they have no tubercle or neck. That means they have, they have no tubercle and no neck in these ribs. That's why they are called as atypical. So the first rib is the shortest, stoutest, flattest, strongest, and the most curved of all ribs. So you can see the uniqueness of the first rib as compared with the other ribs in the thoracic cage so it has two surfaces superior and inferior and two borders anterior and posterior borders the superior surface is rough while the inferior surface is smooth and has no coastal groove no coastal groove in the first rib why superior surface is rough in the in the first rib why superior surface is rough um we have a muscles which attach on the first rib but especially here we, talk, we are talking of the scarring muscles the anterior scarring muscle middle scarring muscle they attach on the first rib and that's why we are forming what you call the scarring tubercle scarring tubercle is the point where the scarring muscle tend to attach on the first rib we have the uh, anterior groove anterior groove which uh, is the point where subclavian vein passes subclavian vein passes 
in the interior glue. So all of this they make the, the surface to become love. We have the posterior glue which allow the passage of subclavian artery and the lower trunk of brachial plexus. So you see, as we discussed in the brachial plexus, that it passes between the anterior and the middle skull and muscle. Also, as you, as you can see here, as it passes above the first rib, it passes through the posterior groove. All of these they can appear in your exam in the form of MCQ, so you need to know them in one way or another. So you can see this is how the first rib can be seen. Uh, this is the attachment of the sculling medias. This is the attachment of the sculling scalinus serratus anterior muscle. Then uh, this is the uh, tubercle. As you can see, we have the tubercle. Then you have the T1 nerve root, T1 nerve root, superior intercostal artery, uh, superior intercostal vein. Then sympathetic trunk. Another corner to if you have and then from there, you need inferior surface. Ukun nakotra ni into a superior surface. Superior surface to na subclavian artery, then subclavian vein. Unana kuna ligament in Marimbara and Bosina Zina touch up. So this is the Aunazo corner. Superior surface lazima winin. Superior surface lazima itakua. Superior surface lazima itakua rap because of the passage of all of these structures at the superior surface so from there we can go to to discuss about the thoracic vertebra we discuss about the rib number one because of its uniqueness as compared with other ribs so let's move to the thoracic vertebra thoracic vertebra are uh, they are told with number thoracic vertebra they are told with number main distinctive feature is the presence of costal facets so the distinctive feature of the thoracic vertebra is the presence of the costal facet. In your practical exams, you can be uh, given the vertebra and then you can be uh, asked to, to describe the vertebra. And then later you'll be, you'll be uh, asked or you'll be told, to, you'll be told to, to, to say maybe what do you think, what is the anatomical position of that vertebra, is that thoracic, is that lumbar, is that cervical? So how can you uh, how can you know if it is a lumbar, it is a cervical, or it is a, a thoracic? So you need to know the distinctive feature of the vertebra in each region. So um, we have uh, studied about the upper limb, but we have not studied about the head and neck. When we be studying or discussing about the head and neck, we discuss also the unique features of the cervical vertebra. So now let's uh, discuss about the uniqueness of the thoracic vertebra. Is the presence of the costal facet, costal facet allowing the attachment of our of ribs on the side of bodies and often transverse processes, often transverse processes, which allow the uh, attachment of the ligaments. Now, they are classified as typical thoracic vertebra, typical thoracic vertebra from number two to number eight, and a typical thoracic vertebra number one. Number nine to number uh, twelve. So another corner to number classify typical and atypical thoracic vertebra. It is different from how we classify typical and atypical ribs. Typical and atypical ribs. Corner the corner. This is how the um, vertebra of human being is divided uh, in cervical seven, thoracic the uh, twelve then. Lumbar, they are five, sacro, they are five, fused, and cochisio, they are four, fused. So, some of people they think that um, because the vertebra appear like this, there is no distinct features. But actually, there are distinct features of every kind of a vertebra in this list. So, as you can see, this is the, the diagram we show. You can see we have the superior demi pocket. Then here we will have, for example, here we have the superior and the inferior demi facet for articulation. So the rib uh, will attach here one facet and one facet will attach in another vertebra. We have the inferior articular process. We have the facet for articular with the tubercle of the rib. Uh, we have the superior, superior articular process. And then we have the spinous process. Spinous process is as a behind. So as you can see the vertebral body, then the 
the table of foramen here is round. Also, the, the, the structure of the vertebral foramen varies from one vertebra to, uh, to another, as we shall see later. But here, the vertebral foramen is round in shape. In other vertebra, you can see the structure is uh, the structure of the vertebra varies in shape. Some of them it is bean shaped, or it, is, uh, it has different shapes. So, this is the, how thoracic vertebra can be seen. So, features of typical thoracic vertebra. In the body, uh, the body has heart shape. Body has heart shape. On the corner, um, however, it's not seen clearly, but uh, you can see the, the, the heart shape somehow. However, it's not seen clearly, but you can see the, the heart shape somehow. The body of this vertebra, heart shape, somehow you can see the heart shape. So this is what we call with the heart shape in the body of thoracic vertebra. Oh, here you can draw uh, the heart shape of thoracic vertebra. Heart shape, we can draw it as, as copper. So uh, this is how we can describe or we can easier say about the thoracic vertebra, typical thoracic vertebra body. So the body is heart shape. Then we have presence of two costal demi facet. Two costal demi facet. Two costal demi facet indicate that the vertebra is, is typical. Then the vertebra foramen. Presence of small and circular in shape. Small and circular in shape. Vertebra foramen. Vertebra foramen. Uyo hapa tulisema. Kwamba hea nakuwa circular in shape. This is also the uniqueness of thoracic vertebra. Ni circular ni in shape. The vertebra foramen. Tulisema kwamba this is also one among the, the uniqueness. Also, the transverse process. Presence of costal facet at the tips. Costal facet at the tips. In honor, we have facets at the tips of the transverse process. So, unazo kona kwamba, uh, any transverse process, in a present with the, uh, trans, uh, with the facet on the tips, lakini pia unaona, any spinous process, ukiangare spinous process, imeshuka, imeenda downward. Kwa hapa yonyeshi, because ini, ni image ya juu ini image ya juu image ya juu yaweza kuonesha lakini unaona hii lateral image inaonyesha kabisa kwamba the facet hii nini spinous process inashuka also one among the features of the corner corner transverse process spinous process long sharp and slopes downward long sharp and slopes downward umeona hiyo ni sharp kuelezea superior articular facet face posterior an inferior articular surface face anterior superior articular surface face posterior superior face no superior articular face posterior kwa unaweza kuona articular surface hapa tunakuwa nazo mbili kuna hii hapa ambayo ni superior and hii hapa ambayo ni inferior so superior uh yenyewe ina ina ina, ina face posterior and inferior no, you can see uh, how the, the facet they are. Here is where we can call it the posterior. So posterior is here. And this inferior face posterior. But the superior face anterior. I think there is the problem with the... Uh, yeah, superior face... Superior face posterior. Anterior face anterior. No, I'm not sure about this because... Uh, uh, the diagram here shows but anyway you can go through books or i can give you the the relevance of this next time let's move forward now also we have a typical thoracic vertebra a typical thoracic vertebra in the typical we have vertebra number one completely superior costal facet it has only superior costal facet for head of rib number one in inferior demi facet is present so it has complete superior facet and inferior demi facet. Vertebra number 10 often often T9 Vertebra number 10 and often T9 single complete costal facet on the bodies. 
for head of their own ribs, they lack inferior demifacet. So these they have no inferior demifacet is how typical ribs they are. Then you have vertebrae uh, 11 and 12, no cost of facet on transverse process. No cost of facet on transverse processes. And have only a single complete facet on each side of their bodies. Have only a single complete facet on each side of their bodies. So they lack inferior demi facet. They lack inferior demi facet. So now uh, we have rib number moja and a complete facet for moja and inferior. Rib number tisa, we have rib number tisa and a zombie and a superior and inferior. Like in, uh, I mean, sio ribu wapa na manisha ni vertebra Namba kumi Namba kumi Ana moja tu Iyapu Namba kumi na moja moja Namba kumi na mbili mbili So that's why their code is atypical Now let's move to intercostal spaces Intercostal spaces The space between the ribs So it lie um, It lie between adjacent ribs Eleven in number on each side Contain intercostal muscle and the neurovascular structure, intercostal muscle and the neurovascular structure. Last two intercostal spaces are open in front. Open in front, because of the ribs, they are the floating one. So, in the corner, we have intercostal space. Unaona easy in the ribs, ribs, like in the spaces, unanza ku count up space. So, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. 8, 9, then you have 10 and 11. And this is what you call uh, the costal angle. Costal angle. Costal angle is different from the sternal angle. It's different from the sternal angle. So from there, a typical intercostal space. Those spaces intervening between typical ribs. Typical ribs are, are traversed by vessels and nerves which are confined to Thoracic wall are known as typical intercostal space. Kwa hiyo, kama nukumuka concept of typical ribs, to the same apart typical ribs, zinazia lava tatu hadi lava tisa. These are typical ribs. Kwa hiyo, kwenye 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 issue intercostal spaces, pia intercostal space ambazo ziko kwenye typical ribs, zita kwa zina nini? Zina, zina hole, au zita kwa zina Something like um, we are calling it the the container a groove which allow the passage for blood vessels and nerves, and that's why they are called as typical. So intercostal space boundary superior superiorly in a co bounded by the raw margin of the rib above it is cartilage. Above and it is cartilage. Corner the corner in a rib. Kwa intercostal space kwa mfano yapa Superiorly boundary yake na kuwa ni rib Inferiorly ni rib Unaona Inferiorly upper margin of the rib below and discarded Anteriorly lateral border of sternum Lateral border of sternum Ndo na kuwa Boundary intercostal space Na posteriorly ni border of corresponding thoracic vertebra Yani hapa So Kutuja kwa ngalaya kwenye content of the intercostal space Intercostal space contain muscle Vessel and nerve Muscle vessel and nerve. These are the intercostal muscles. Then you have the the blood vessels in which we have the intercostal vein. Then artery. Then we have vein, artery. Then nerve. Vein, artery. Then nerve. This is the one principle which is uh, normally used to to one principle one vein. Artery, nerve. Normally, it is using the arrangement of the blood vessels and nerve in several parts when we are discussing about uh, about anatomy. So, intercostal vessels and nerves run between middle and innermost intercostal muscle. Middle and innermost intercostal muscle. So, as you can see here, we have the middle, middle intercostal muscle. Let us just uh, try to show you. Here we have the external intercostal muscle external intercostal muscle from there we have the middle intercostal muscle which is this one the middle 
or we call it internal intercostal muscle but we have the innermost innermost so we have external internal and innermost innermost this one the nerves and body vessels they are running between between the innermost and the inner internal intercostal muscle internal and the innermost intercostal muscle this is where the nerves and body vessels they are running at and as you can see here we have a, a like a groove which allow the passage of uh, of the intercostal uh, i mean of the intercostal nerves and uh, blood vessels so arranged in the order from above down we have vein artery and the nerve that's why we call it the the van we call it the van so intercostal muscles intercostal muscles tuna muscles kama serratus anterior unaweza kianza kwenye skin kwenye fascia na kuja na muscles kama serratus anterior zina attach kwenye kwenye ribs lakini tuna external intercostal internal intercostal na innermost intercostal na hizo body vessels na structures zinapita katikati ya innermost and internal intercostal muscle lakini ukija kuangalia kwamba huku ndani unakuja kuta kuna pliula palieto pliula palieto pliula visceral pliula and then from there tuna rungs sasa unaweza kusema kwamba why is this important this is very important because kwenye msikio unauliza kwamba mtu alifanywa injury alipofanywa injury alichowa kisu chowa kisu kwenye ubavu sasa ujue sequence ya kisu kitapita kwenye structure gani toka kwenye skin kana kwa superficial fascia kitapita kwenye structure gani maana kama hichi kisu kilifika kwenye lungs kilipita kwenye kilipita kwenye structure kama skin fascia then intercostal intercostal external intercostal internal intercostal na innermost intercostal muscles ko you need very important for you to know so muscles they are arranged in, in, in three sheets from outside to inside external intercostal muscle most superficial internal intercostal the intermediate layer and innermost intercostal the deepest layer so also we have the intercostal vessels each intercostal space contain arteries and veins contain arteries and veins kunaweza kuona hao aorta inatoka pale ina divide artery inaenda kuwa intercostal artery na vein inatoka pale inaenda ku divide inakuwa intercostal intercostal vein na nerves zinatoka wapi kwenye spinal cord so intercostal arteries in each intercostal space the arteries are arranged in two groups the anterior intercostal arteries anterior intercostal arteries upper six spaces arise from internal thoracic artery they arise from internal thoracic artery but the lower three spaces arise from musculophrenic artery musculophrenic artery and then we have posterior intercostal artery upper two arise from superior intercostal artery superior intercostal artery and uh, the, 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 the branch of a costal cervical trunk costal cervical trunk of the costal cervical trunk of the SCA I don't remember this uh, this blood vessel SCA but uh, don't worry so lower nine spaces arise from descending thoracic aorta descending thoracic aorta these are the posterior posterior arteries then you have the uh, intercostal arteries as you can see how it can be seen the intercostal uh, intercostal intercostal arteries so you can see this is the descending thoracic aorta how the branches they are coming from the descending thoracic aorta and you can see all the structures which are present here um, intercostal veins in each space the veins are arranged in two groups anterior vein you have the upper six spaces drain into internal thoracic vein lower three drain into the musculophrenic vein on the right side drain into zygus and hemiazygus vein azygus and hemiazygus vein so this is how the intercostal vein they can be seen this is the azygus vein azygus vein and um, hemiazygus vein is uh, 
MSX vein. Uh, we have an uh, accessory MSX vein. This one is accessory MSX vein. MSX vein is here. So let me draw to you so that you can see it. So um, let me use this color. So the agas, uh, azagas vein is this one. You see? This vein is what we call the azygous and it comes from our uh, inferior vena cover. So the hemiazygous vein is this branch. Hemiazygous and this one is accessory hemiazygous vein. So uh, these are the some of the veins which drain the thoracic cage, but we have the anterior anterior veins as you can see them the anterior veins as you you can see them all of them they are responsible for draining the thorax so the posterior intercostal vein as you can see here we have the azygous vein we have the azygous vein here this one is the azygous vein here we have the hemiazygous uh, accessory azygous vein all of these they drain bloody finally to the heart so however there are some of the structure between but finally to the heart so in the reference line of the thorax until here we have um, what we can call it the midisternal midisternal sometimes you call it the midclavicular midclavicular so we have a midisternal line we have midisternal and then you have midclavicular these are very important because as you will go to discuss uh, other things later in the clinical points you need to know this and you can see we have axillary line then you have mid axillary line posterior axillary line axilla mid-axillary, anterior axillary and the posterior axillary line uh, mid-sternal, mid-clavicular light, axillary lines normal chest area of the, of the lungs normal chest area of the lungs with no any deformity it can be seen like this way so that means here we have the heart that's why you can see it is white because of the presence of the heart so all of this black it is because air lungs they are filled with air so they appear as black but in a pathological condition in which lung is filled with fluid this is the diaphragm this is the diaphragm the, the soft tissues in x-ray they appear as white so in in, in a condition so far in conditions uh, of pathological conditions here can can lungs can be filled with water and you call it the, uh, the pleural effusion we call it the pleural effusion so in applied anatomy which is the last part to discuss today applied anatomy you have rib fracture rib fracture in many injury many trauma we have rib fracture and cause pneumothorax or oh, hemothorax pneumothorax or oh, hemothorax uh, pneumothorax that means fluidy uh, fluidy is is uh, the, 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 the thorax is filled with fluid or the pleula is filled with fluid and uh, pneumothorax that means the it's not the, the fluid again but it is pleula is filled with blood hemothorax Infections um, like tuberculosis, they are very important in the thoracic region and most especially they start in the lens which is the primary site and they tend to metastasize to spread to other parts of the body. Then uh, sternal angle or the angle fluids, as I said, it is very important angle when you are doing uh, different uh, insertions or different operations of the thorax, that is the sternal angle, I mean the the angle fluids is very important. Then you have the intercostal spaces. 
location of the apex on the fifth intercoastal space. Fifth intercoastal space. So at the mid clavicular line, fifth intercoastal space at the mid clavicular line, to go to now, apex beat of the heart, provide access to pleural cavity in the thoracothentesis. Thoracothentesis. So, um, so I'm going to find thoracothentesis and proceed to conduct fluid with the thorax. We need to know about the intercostal spaces. We have specific intercostal spaces and we're going to find thoracothentesis. Um, let's discuss a little about diaphragm. Diaphragm is the covering, thin skeletal muscle, dome shaped when it lacks the flattened only contraction. Divides thorax and the abdominal cavities. In terms of attachment, its origin is in inferior internal rib cage, inferior internal rib cage, lumbar vertebra. Lumbar vertebra is attached by crawler, and the insertion is on the central tendon. Insertion on the central tendon. Innervated by right and the left phrenic nerve. Right and the left phrenic nerve. And uh, we can discuss later about the, the phrenic nerve and things like that in the thorax. Action of diaphragm uh, is the primary muscle of um, respiration in a voluntary. Primary muscle of respiration. Contraction during inspiration increase volume of the thorax. Decrease pressure of the thorax. That means air in India and Dani Kosabgani, pressure con thorax y condogo, half inje kuna pressure kubwa. So air ita move kutoka outside ku ingia and dani kwen thorax and kuna pressure dog. Lakini that is involuntary. But in the first uh, in the first contraction that is voluntary, used for defecation. Defecation. This idea. <coughs> that is because of the Contraction of the diaphragm, the first contraction of the diaphragm. So, on a final first contraction in order to increase the pressure in the abdomen. In a decreased pressure abdomen, in a increase, I mean in a decreased volume, in an increased pressure. So, used for defecation, urination, and the labor. Defecation, urination, and labor. So, it decreases volume of abdomen, decreases volume of abdomen, abdominal cavity, increases the pressure in the abdominal cavity. Pushes on abdominal organs to move contents out. Pushes on abdominal organs to move contents in the abdomen out of it. Uh, opening of the diaphragm from posterior to anterior, we have the out chiatus. Out chiatus, ni pale abapo inapita aorta, azygous vein, na thoracic duct. Sasa, this is one among the very common MCQ which appear in the exams. Unakuta kwamba wanakuuliza, wanakupa maelezo then later they ask you about the structures which are passing through the aortic hiatus. So kwenye diaphragm tuna structure nyingi, tuna aortic hiatus, esophageal hiatus na cavo opening. Cavo opening inapitisha inferior vena cava na right phrenic nerve. So ni vena cava na nerve. Esophageal hiatus ni esophagus na vagus nerve. Wakati aortic hiatus ni aorta, azegas vena thoracic duct. So even if you want to know what you in your head, you want to know what they are very important for your for your knowledge of our anatomy. From there, opening of, uh, of the diaphragm, come on over the corner, kuna inferior vena cava, inferior vena cava, to isema kwa mbena pita kwenye cavo opening, cavo opening. So to na inferior vena cava, na to isema hapo inapita pia na nani, na right phrenic nerve right phrenic nerve. Like you know, this is, we label it as impression of liver. Manaka liver, then a cup. Impression of stomach, equal panda huku. Then tuna abdominal water, abdominal water ile pale. Tuna is, uh, esophagus in esophageal hiatus. Not your structure they, they are seen. So, yeah, it's a kind of like that way, that is the open of uh, esophagus. So this marks the end of our session about the thoracic wall and in the next session we will be discussing 
about the thoracic cavity and its contents. The session was somewhat longer, but I hope you have enjoyed the session. Thank you, and later wish you nice studies.